before him. Let's acknowledge him. Give him all the glory. Lord, I thank you. I magnify your name. I celebrate your faithfulness. Somebody who is grateful to God, please lift up your hands. And let's celebrate this God who has permitted you and I. Giving us the grace to stand before him. Lord, we thank you. Jesus, we give you all the praise. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Just a while ago, we had some quite a number of testimonies to the doing of this great God. Only him can do what we have, seen, what we have heard. And I'd like you to know that he did not allow you to see what others have seen. Is the testimony. Don't you think so? If he didn't allow you to see what others saw, what a big testimony. So if you have not seen what they saw, lift up your two hands. Give him praise. Lord, I thank you for you never allowed me to see what others have seen. The negative experiences out there. In their families, careers, lives, and all that. You have not allowed me to see the negative experience out there. I give you all the glory. I bless your name, my father. Come on, somebody lift up your hands and let your voice be louder to him. Lord, I thank you. On the behalf of my families, I thank you. On the behalf of this great church, on the behalf of everyone, I thank you. Somebody lift up your voice and let's give him all the glory. name we have prayed everlasting king of glory this morning again thank you we are standing gorgeously dressed you permitted it we travel far and near but here we are standing very strong Lord thank you for the testimonies we have received this morning Jesus you did it all and therefore we return glory back to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Come on, say louder, amen. amen. Please put your hands together for Jesus and joyfully and comfortably remain standing. Where are you going to? Amen. I will stand and preach this message together today. Did you like that? Are you sure? Don't bind me in your heart. Put your hands together for Jesus. And have your seat. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I love you by Dolly. <laughs> huh? Tell somebody one more time, I love you by force. Say it again, I love you compulsorily. He said, I love you by super. And I love you by... <laughs> Hallelujah. The God of heaven will continue to make his love to be stronger in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. The love of God does not guarantee you and I doing anything before we are love. We are here before, this, before God this morning because of his mercy and his love. The Bible says he's plenteous in mercy. Plenteous. Man. So we are product of mercy. So what somebody has done, what he has not done, does not guarantee frowning, I mean, frowning in your face. Look at somebody and say, I love you by force. Amen. Amen. Well, on the behalf of God's servant, our father, Bishop David Oedekong, again this morning, the 24th of December 2023. What a joy you are here. I say, what a joy you are here. And I welcome every one of you in Jesus' mighty name. I said, I welcome every one of you in Jesus' mighty name. Today is our Hosanna Sunday service. 
You are clapping for Jesus. Do that again. And in a moment, we'll be celebrating God and thanking him together in a dance. And I know you'll be ready to do that. Praise the Lord. Let's quickly look at this teaching this morning, which is captioned, Understanding the Wonders of Thanksgiving. Understanding the wonders of thanksgiving. So as the case, I mean, as case may be, there are wonders embedded in thanksgiving, but only those who understand it, applies it. Wonders available that turns your destiny open, that turns that miracle open, but only those who understands the wonders of thanksgiving applies thanksgiving. This morning I pray that God will open this great mystery to you and as we begin to engage in it, may you begin to experience the wonders that follows in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Permit me this morning to say for, to you, every one of us this morning, that there are two kinds of voices, humanly speaking. There are two kinds of Voices, permit me to say this morning. One, the outer voice of man and the inner voice of man. The outer voice, which every one of you can hear me saying here or talking to you this morning. Then we come also to the inner voice, which only you and God is permitted to hear. No matter how close you are to me, I can't know what is going on in your heart. That's the inner voice speaking to you. No matter how close I am to my wife, I don't know what is going on in her heart per time. Only God knows and herself. And I want you to know that the voice of the inner man most times sounds louder than the voice of the outer man. And that is what defines your destiny. And that's what defines my destiny. Because God judges you and I much more by our inner voices than our outer voice. What goes on in your heart? What goes on in my heart? What goes on in our heart? Many times things are placed in your hand by God. But what goes on in your heart? Did you acknowledge him? Or you first of all condemn it in your inner voice before your outer voice appreciates it? Your inner voice is louder and it speaks louder or loudest and it controls your life than your outer voice. That is why many times God is not bothered about what happens around your life most times, but much more of the heart. You hear him saying to you, and my son, give me your heart. I can see what is happening in your heart, but give me your heart. So the trouble of the heart is what actually depicts the trouble of our physical life. Whatever wins your heart, wins your physical life. Whatever prevails in your heart, prevails in your physical life. Many times temptation comes to you and I. God never meant it to punish you. He just wants to actually know what is in your inner voice so as to determine your physical life and to place you where he belongs. If it's what is going on in your heart is clear, then you are entitled to the blessings of the physical. Praise the Lord. Read this scripture very gently with me, quickly with me. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and in verse 1 beginning. Look at what the Bible said here. It said, all the commandments which I command thee this day shall be observed to do that ye may live. Come on, say, I shall live. Say it again, I shall live. And multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear 
to your fathers don't forget this you want to check what is there before you possess before you, you enjoy the land look at verse 2 and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years January to December in the wilderness in court one to humble you and to prove you to know what was in your heart whether thou wouldest keep his commandment or no so what comes into our lives is a function of what happens in our heart did you appreciate what comes into your heart first I mean to your hand first of all first of all I say something sometimes I said, no matter what it looks like, whether money or whatever you are giving, it is not the hand that gives. It is the heart. The hand is only a conveyor of what the heart has conceived. So if the heart conceives it, that is when the hand communicates it. So God wants to know whatever he gives to you, do you accept it from your heart? So the blessings of God to man is essentially a product of what happens in our inner man. Did you accept what he put in your hand? Many a times if you are sincere to yourself, when things come to you most times, if it is not the value of what you are looking for, you first of all condemn it. And that is what God hears because he speaks louder than the outer voice. And so if it is not accepted by the first inner voice, then forget it. The outer voice do nothing but just um, a waste of time. So God checks your heart to determine what happens there by what virtue what he gives to you and I before he places the next blessings in our heart. I mean our hands. Glory to God. Proverbs chapter 3 and in verse 6 he says in all the ways do what? Acknowledge him. And what will happen? And he shall direct your path in all your ways. From December, January to December, he has kept you. Do you actually acknowledge him as the doer? The success behind your journey. Do you thank him? Do you acknowledge him? Do you appreciate him? If you have suffered any wreckage, God is the reason why it was not a total wreckage. God is the reason. If you are broken down anywhere at all, because my father told me, Bishop W. He said, Before you break through, you'll be tempted to break down. But if you don't accept that breaking down in good faith, you will never break through. So if you are trying to break down in anywhere that looks like hey, things are not working, right? Watch it. The breakthrough that is awaiting you is a reason for that breakdown. So thank God for the breakdown. Thank God for the breakdown. I was speaking to them in the first service and I told them the beauty on the other side of shame that ordinarily people will be running away from shame. I don't want to go through shame. I don't want to go through shame. If they tell you shame, you check it very well the other side there is good side of shame how do I mean that oh look at it very carefully sir there are things that you keep yourself together to stay with God not because anything perhaps some influential people including God have actually spoken to you but you refuse not to follow you refuse not to follow let me say this to you so if not for shame, there are people that will be living free life on occasion. Two of us. If not for shame, there are people that they'll be singing Osana and be going to prison. They like it. If not for shame, there are people that on, on the large main road they can be fornicated. But because of shame that you wouldn't do all of that, you hide your face. I don't want to associate with shame. So what do you do when you see God? Won't you thank God? Thank God for shame that keep me away from fornication. Thank God for shame that keep me away from stealing. 
Thank God for shame that won't allow me to walk naked on the street. So shame kept you that you didn't do what you ought to do. So when you see shame, thank shame. That's the other part of shame. Or when you are thanking God, thank God, Lord, thank you for shame that have kept me away from misbehaving. If not, I would have been part of those who have seen this shame here. Thank God for shame. So shame is not utterly wrong, even though it's wrong, because of shame. You won't do some certain things you are doing. That's why you are sitting gorgeously dressed here. So friends, we must come to a point that at every time of our lives, check around your life, there is something to thank God for. That you are breathing very hard. Thank God that is still there. Thank God that is still there. You get to the hospital now, there are people with oxygen. Huh? God gave you a size of bed. You are sleeping and rolling from one place to another. You didn't know the value. Go to the hospital when they give you one narrow bed. You are compared to stay there. You are compared to stay there. But when you are rolling on the bed at home, you didn't know. You even you are, you are complaining. You are complaining. This my mattress is down. What kind of nonsense is this? I think this time I should go and look for an orthopedic uh, mattress. I, I'm, 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 I'm too big for this. Go to the hospital. Bigger people than you that in that narrow bed. Bigger than you. I said on Tuesday or Wednesday rather that some people are saying, oh, I've been looking for admission. I didn't get. I've been looking for admission. I didn't get. But thank God that hospital didn't give you one admission. If hospital give you an admission with other admission that you miss, which one will you like? Oh! Somebody said, f- my spirit, my heart was bleeding when I had the testimony. 19 pints of blood. What? 19. There is no value anywhere than healthy life. For healthy life without drugs, sir, is more than anything, sir. That you are in abroad taking pans of blood. Is he a lost journey? So they call you and say, hello, sir. How are you? I'm fine. Where are you? I'm in London. What doing what? Well, I have some few challenges with my health. I just came here to take some um, pints of blood. I've just taken two. I'm about taking four. So you are in London. Is that good? Even though you are in London, is that a good testimony? Man, a Nigeria without, I mean, a Nigerian man without pints of blood and a London man with plenty of pints of blood, which one do you like? <laughs> I'm going to London. I'm going to London to do what? Hey, treatment. That's not a testimony. Stay here with health and vitality. Is enough to lift up your hands and say, Father, I thank you. Uh, I want to go to abroad. I want to go to abroad. I never go. This and that. What's your problem? When it's time for you to go, you go. Stay here. Nobody's changing you from here. <laughs> so we have risen to glorify God. So whatever goes on in your heart, God reads and understands it before he ever bless you in return again. So whatever you see, big or small, water or half, please thank God for it. Thank God for it. The part of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. So on daily basis, you and I have been placed by God to keep shining. Whether you like it or not. Because the part of the joy is a shining light. That you have not seen sickness, you are shining. That you have not slept in hunger, you are shining. Or that you have not eaten what you want to eat, but at least you are taking something, you are shining. So every time of the day you look at your life, something is happening, you are just shining. So thank God for it. Thank God for it. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Many years ago, I was in Kano living as a young man who was who is trying to make ends meet. And one day, sir, I had no food to eat. All I had around me was a sack of pure water. 
I can't forget it. I was standing by Jebu Road, by Ibo Road. I drank that pure water and I fling it up and I said, Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> there are things you go to that make you have different things. So today, that was my dinner. Not that I'm going to fake it, that was my dinner. But I took that water with thanksgiving to God. And then today now, my children, by reason of maybe they think things are valuable, you see them remove pure water like this, and be using it as gone. So they press it on themselves. I said, stop it, my friend. That was my dinner many years ago. No waste here. No waste. So what am I saying? There are many of us, by the reason of the blessings of God upon your life, waste is nothing to you anymore. You throw things here and there. It's a sign of ingratitude. Grains on the floor in my house, never. From where? Never. You, he gives you food. It's a size you must eat it. If you don't eat it, you're in trouble. So don't, 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 don't do anything. You carry pure water. And then there are many homes on this. By reason of sign of ingratitude, your children are playing with pure water, playing with all manner of food. Some they even use it as football. They throw food on themselves. The father will sit and say, Junior, I don't know how to, you know how to throw like this. Home. Father. Father. It's food though. Fetch a spoon and throw at each other. Another one, fetch another one and throw. And then mother is watching. Mother is watching. You, you dare not do that. Because anytime you are mute towards such things like that is a sign of ungratefulness of the highest order to God. That means he's a fool for blessing you. So, so we must get back to our various places and check what is on the wasteboard. What is it that God has privileged to bless me? Because what you do with what he gives to you determine what comes to your hand next. So you must, you must be a good manager of his blessings upon your life. That is showing gratitude to him. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Can I say this to you? So, it's, we will we, we'll see some few things before now. The reason why I won't allow waste in my house is because of some certain things that we have seen while growing up, even while in school as an adult. So any little blessings of God upon my hand in my life, I value it. Sir, if you send a recharge card of 20, 000, I mean 20 naira to me, I will call you to thank you more than 20 naira. That is me. Anything. Because it is not by right. Anytime you see the things God is given to you as a right, that is the reason why I won't thank him. Some are living by right. At least I'm a graduate of Harvard. I should live. I graduated with first class upper. Who will talk to me? Who will talk to me? And so you walk like one elephant. Unknown to you that what a touch, you lost it. If you remain too small in your eyes, God will only take you to where you ought to be. So the only way to remain small in your eyes is to tell God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's the only way to it. That's the only way to it. That's the only way to it. And I pray that God will open somebody's eyes here this morning to ever remain small in his or her eyes so as God will take you to the place of your honor. Come on, you believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. Amen. You believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. You believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. May God change your story. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want you to know this, that God hears both the outer voice and the inner voice. He hears them. Because he that maketh the ear shall he not hear. Or he that created the eye shall he not see. He hears. And as he hears, he wastes your actions before he bless you. What you do, or what goes on in your heart, he wastes it. 1 Samuel chapter 2, and in verse 3. Simple. God is a God of action. He wastes your action before he bless you. What goes on? He said, talk no more so, I mean, so exceedingly proudly. 
<laughs> Do you know who I mean? Harvard graduate. You know who I was? Covenant University graduate. You know who I mean? Engineer. <laughs> that engineer all things. So talk no more so exceedingly proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Shekbon. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. He knows all things. And by him actions are what? Weighed. Actions are weighed. Many years ago I was preaching. In our church in Zaria. And I said most times when you feel some things. The first interjection that comes into your heart. You say mm. What is mm? Inside that mm there is meaning inside it. He knows it. He knows it. He knows it. He knows he can calculate that word. Hmm? He knows what is inside that womb because he's a God of knowledge. And by him, actions are weighed. If your womb is to condemn his blessings, he knows. If your womb is to appreciate what he has done, he knows. He's a God of knowledge. By him, actions are weighed. So if you are not seeing the blessings, check your actions. If you are not seeing the promotions, check your actions. Check it. By him, actions are away. Therefore, friends, can I say this to you? Until a man is spiritually matured, he or she stands to be contending with God in all issues. Until you and I were spiritually matured, we stand the risk of contending with God on all issues. He has not come, you are fighting. He came, you are fighting. He has not blessed you, you are fighting. He has blessed you, you are troubling him. Why? Because we are not mature spiritually. Glory to God. You say it is time for everyone to have senses or have the blessings of God upon my life. What is my response to it? The things He has given to me. What is my response to it? He said, A songwriter said, Count your blessings one by one, and it will surprise you what happened, what the Lord has done. And it takes only a spiritual, mature believer to sit down and say, Sir, just like we are told in the first service, that somebody heard me say, Sit down and undertake some thinking. And see how God has blessed you. So he sat down and discovered that I have not been thanking God. And so there was turbulence here and there. And he began to engage in thanksgiving to God. Home settled. And he said in that testimony, he said, I have more money to spend Christmas than before. Because somebody went back to sit down and ruminate through all his life. This is where I've been missing it. And so as a mature Christian, if things see, please hear me, sir. This is not to abuse anyone. This is not to say anything wrong or be, behave arrogant to anybody. If as an, a mature, if as a mature Christian, things are not happening to you the way it ought to happen, please sit down and examine your life. Sit down and examine your life. Check your life. Because God does not lead backward. God leads forward. If you are engaging a reverse gear, instead of going forward as a believer, sit down and check your life. So it's not necessary when things happen. He works your actions to bless your life. The last blessing that came into your life, what is your reaction towards it? What is your action towards it? Because until your actions are weighed by him, he never bless you in return. Glory to God. And so friends, lack of spiritual maturity is the reason for ingratitude. Lack of spiritual maturity is a reason for ingratitude. If you are a mature believer, sir, whatever God put in your hand is what giving him thanks for. It's what giving him thanks for. Because if you look behind your life, around your life, there is, I mean, there are many things that what more, more, more than more, much more than what he has put in your hand. For instance, your breath, what, what more than anything that God ever put in your hand. So mature Christians will see what is in their hand, they will see what they have and thank God for it. I told them in the first service, I said, listen, it's not everything that we have to monetize or see it with monetary eyes before we thank God. No. There are many children on the street here today now misbehaving, sir. Misbehaving. Smoking in their hand. Some has lost their life. Some 
uh, they have to revive them in rehabilitation centers and all of those things for hard drugs and all of that. Some you tell them, I mean, the father can't tell them, sit down. And they sit down. No matter your shout, sit down. I say, what is it? Even say sit down, they check behind. Who are you talking to? That's the father talking to his son. There are daughters that when they come back from home, I mean, from wherever they went to, in the midnight, the father will sit in the sitting room. They say, hi. And walk to their room. The father dare not to say anything. But here you are, you and I. You see, talk to your children. They are still together with you. Peace and serenity. They are not in a, I mean, maybe rehabilitation. You need to thank God, sir. You need to thank God. Or you think all these guys that carry one kind hair. I'm not saying everyone that carry it is bad. Some that carry all kind of hair there. Carry their trousers put on, the, on their buttocks. You think they didn't come back? They came out from one somebody's home. Home, uh, somebody's children. The father has talked and talked. The mother has talked and talked. There is no way for change, so they leave them to their conscience. But here you are. Your children go to school. They return back normal. Despite the mixed multitude of peer group pressures, you think you are the maker. So don't say, I'm looking for money. I've not seen money, so I have no reason to thank God. No, there are things that is beyond money that you need to thank God for it. Praise the Lord. May God help you and I. May God give you an understanding to see the reason why we must thank this God. Come on, let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. <laughs> Oh, it's another thing to be sick. It's another thing to go to hospital and come back alive. It's another thing to be sick. It's another thing to go to the right hospital and still die. The right hospital. Some few days ago, I went to one hospital to pray for someone. General hospital. As the name implies, when they call general, you know what it looks like. Anything goes. So I got there to sit down. I, can't, I couldn't sit down. To sit down. And yet somebody survived from that hospital. Some went outside the country and died. If you are looking for money before you thank God, you won't thank God though. There are things you need to thank God every day. That you see the bed people are lying down is enough to corrupt your life. The bed. Is enough to give you disease. Plus the one you came with. But yet people survive from there. And there are people that are flown out of this place outside the country. And still died. It is not money that is all the, all the thing you are looking for. It's not money. It's God. It's God. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. So in this season, it is time for you and I to have a holistic thinking about where we are coming from and where we are finding ourselves. And then what proceeds out of our mouth should be thanksgiving. Should be thanksgiving. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I told them in the first service, I said, it is not age that determines or defines sense. It is sense that defines age. It is sense that defines age, not age that defines sense. They can't work together. Your sense must be right, and so you can mature in age. But as someone who matured in age, gray hair like my own, yet behaving like Tata, they needed to carry feeding, but adult feeding bottle. That a man behave, adult behave like you are wondering why should an adult behave this way? It's a spiritual kindergarten. He needed that dog feeding bottle. Long one, sir. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The question before me and you this morning, but why do we thank God? We look at some few things and I'll rise up to pray. I want to dance before the Lord. Why do we thank God? If we are not aware of it. Number one. We thank God for everything. 
I mean, every good thing he has done for us. Every what? Every good thing. Come on, say every. If there is anything that looks good around you, if there is anything that looks good around you, every. Every. Every good thing he has done. And you know something? There is nobody that has the right to do any good thing except God. Except God. The man that comes to bless you is not him that come on his own. It's God that tell him, go and give him. Even though you're appreciating the man, you're appreciating God much more. The man that you never know his address, that took his time and searched for you and come to you, sir, it is God, sir. So every glory give, I mean, that you see anything good around your life must be God, must be God, must be God. God is behind every good and perfect gifts. Come on now. Put your hand like this. Please, listen very carefully. Can you feel anything? Can you feel the heartbeat? Is it good? Is it the person sitting by your side that is keeping it? Who kept it? All these years. Who kept it? All these years. The day he removed his hand from your life, you are gone home. Somebody came to our church one day, many years ago, in his solo. He did some work on the altar. And I was an AR, ARP then. And I asked him, how much do we pay you? And he called one outrageous amount of money because everybody see living faith as a basket to harvest money. Before I talk, he's part. No, 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 no. I said, no need to fight. Listen to me. I have one thing to tell you. He said, say it. I have a prayer to pray for. He said, pray, pray. I want to pray and give me my money. Let me go. I said, okay, listen to the prayer. I want to pray for you. Oh, Lord. Remove your hand from the life of this man. As soon as he hear that, he said, no, sir. I don't want the money again. He left the money till tomorrow. Till tomorrow. Oh Lord, remove your hand from this man's life. You know, some naughty people say, pray that prayer, let me go. Can God remove his hand? Sir, it's dangerous, sir. If he remove his hand one minute, you are gonna. You are gonna. So this young man, not because we coerced him, not because he was afraid as the case may be, but I think he understood what he looks like for God to remove his hand from my life. He said, I don't need this money. Many years ago, 2003. He left that money till tomorrow. Never to collect it. Many people are bragging here and there unknown to them that just a hand is what is keeping your life. And you have never remembered to say thank you for that hand that I've kept you from January till now. It's possible as I'm even talking to some to, to us now. Some are even feeling, uh, Pastor, no talk that thing. Now because God don't make your own, I make you to talk like that. It's possible somebody saying so. Sir, when I was not quarter close to where I am, sir, I used to thank God. I used to thank God. I know what it looks like, sir. To be alive and still maintain value. If God is not there, forget it. Oh. Praise the Lord. James chapter 1 and verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from where? Is from above. Is from above. And come down to you and I on earth here from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning. So whatever that is good around your life, whatever that is good around your business, whatever that is good around your career, around your home, see it that it came down from heaven, the father of light. I was telling our children some few days ago in our morning devotion, I said, if you write exam at all, and you came out of it, and you know you wrote well, don't say I wrote this exam, man, excellently. <laughs> Boy, I give them no. You'll be surprised what you think you give them without God when it came out or when it comes out finally. You declare that you are nowhere to be found. But I've heard somebody say that he went in into an exam, professional exam, sir. 
wrote his exams and in the exam hall he said according to his exam, he said I went blackout professional exam I went blackout and after the exam she went back to God and God said do you know that God have a pen in his hand and so she left with that revelation of that world and was thanking God the result came she was out of it she was out of it that is why I advise people many times that anytime you are writing exams they ask you questions you don't know it instead of filling the paper thinking that you are writing to confuse a marker you are wasting your time it is better just leave that place and go back to thank God properly for the things you didn't know and the outcome of it examiner can write exam for you sir they were marking you can carry his paper his Bible and write for you and mark you when it's being compared by God but when you have filled the place he can't take another answer sheet to write for you you don't know it leave it like that I didn't say you should go to exam and say thank God <laughs> Pastor John has given me an expo <laughs> I won't write oh wow thank you you will be a failure raised to power 10 it's when you didn't know it genuinely or you read for it and suddenly something happened you can't define it you can't write anything please instead of writing rubbish there leave it there just go back and genuinely thank God you see you have you seen people who said I wrote I never expected that I'm going to pass it how come you pass even you yourself you know you can't pass but all the same you pass it how come only God can explain it that is why you need to thank God for whatever happens around your life anything good it is not your making it is God it is God praise the Lord I say praise the Lord may God help you and I may God help you and I come on let me hear your loudest amen may God help you and I in the precious name of Jesus Christ Come on, let me hear you loudest amen. amen. What more? What more? What more? We owe God timely thanksgiving to have our blessings preserved. Timely, come on, say timely. Timely thanksgiving. Not the thanksgiving that I have slept over and over. He did something for you last year. Is this year you are thanking God? Thank God for mercy of God that is plenteous on your head. Thanksgiving is instant. In this commission, sir, did you observe something? Till this last Saturday, till this Sunday, as I'm standing talking to you, what are we doing? Thanksgiving. Product of Shiloh 2023. Instantly. Not belated Thanksgiving. Not procrastinated Thanksgiving. I will give thanks to God tomorrow. You understand to me. You understand with me. I'm a very busy person. He knows my schedules. And tomorrow comes, you didn't do it. You still know your schedules. No, that's a belated one. You just return back from a journey. Straight. Thank God. What seems impossible and suddenly turns possible, just thank God right there. Thank God right there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Did you hear me say one day, hear that I was... I was supposed to have a session where numbers of people that were handed over to me were on wonderful people. And there was Sunday. Oh, we just saw an outpouring of people from nowhere. And then, as I was going out in the evening to get something from the neighborhood in an open field, I just remember all oh, people came to church. I saw Jesus. Thank you. Inside open field, sir. In an open field. Two little guys selling granite. They saw me. Hey, they started running. <laughs> madman, madman, madman. Because only mad person can behave that way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. People came to church. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, Zainab. <laughs> it's ironic. I told myself, I said, little daughter, you don't know what it looks like. I know where I'm coming from. I don't want those people to see. Now listen to me. We took over that church. 37 people in attendance. Before we left, they counted 400 plus. 400 plus. In Adamawa Uba, where we go like this, sir, mockery upon mockery. 
You give hundred to somebody, they just squeeze it in front of you and throw it down. And continue drinking brukutu. <laughs> and kai kai. And miss it. We calabash. Deadly area towards our end. But we went to that time. I'm not saying Uba is deadly. I'm talking about the zone, the kind of people that are there. Don't say, say, my state is deadly. That's not what I'm saying. You know, people can hear when somebody talks another different thing. You hear it in another different dimension. I didn't say that place is deadly. I was blessed from there. God help me. Amen. So I can't say the place is deadly. So hear me well. I see Pastor John. I'm going to say my place is deadly now. <laughs> I didn't say your place is deadly. Forgive me. If that is what you hear, that's what I said. Praise the Lord. So you need to be careful. <laughs> what more? As we rise up. Thanksgiving secures fulfillment of prophecies. Secures what? If there is anything you hear from Shiloh, hear me, sir. If there is anything you hear from Shiloh, sir, you want it to quickly come to pass, just engage in Thanksgiving. Know what God said concerning you, pick it up, and then be thanking God for it. Be thanking God for it. And see the blessings that comes alongside. And see the honor that will come looking for you. All by Thanksgiving. All by Thanksgiving. Sir, it's a mystery that people don't understand. If you engage in Thanksgiving, sir, you will never know the progression in life. You will never, never, never. It's a propeller that brings the word of God into fulfillment in your life. Suddenly, you just see yourself as a wonder. Because you believe it, you say it, you turn it to song, and then thank God for it, and then watch how it happens. Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. Choir sang a song in the first service. I didn't know how you, you, you did it, but all the same, you did it. I didn't know how it looks like, but all the same, you did it. So, if you can explain it, it's no longer God, though. If you can give some narrative to it, it's no longer God. That is why a correct headed man should know how to thank God for it. I don't know how it happened. You did it all the same. Father, thank you. I'm supposed to be in the grave by now. But hear me talking to you, Father, I thank you. My business is supposed to be crawling by now. But hear me blossoming on every side. Father, I thank you. I'm called a barren woman. Father, now maybe this breastfeeding a mother. Father, I thank you. My give me call names upon names. You will never matter to anything. Yet you are changing cars today. Man, man. Man, I thank you. That is the cure for stagnation. That is the cure for stampede. For stampede in life. Thanksgiving to God. Thanksgiving to God. Glory to Jesus Christ. I see God changing your story. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 10 and number 36. For you have need of patience. That after you have done the will of God that you might receive the promise and what is the will of God first Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 8 he said in everything come on say everything in everything give thanks for that is the will of God concerning you and I in everything give thanks so you do the will by giving thanks to God and then when you're on thanksgiving go to him he gives you what you are looking for. Hear me, can I say it to you as we rise up to pray? Most times, delay of blessings is not denial. God is only taking time to make it fit properly to give to you. He's taking his time. He's taking his time. So when they call you a barren woman, don't be angry. Don't be angry. Understand what the Bible says concerning you. He says, sing all ye barren. Listen, this act is, is just what you need to understand. And then link up to the principles of heaven and take the product. If he has told you sing, O ye barren, and then go to be, go to rest, go and be singing. As you are singing, he's in the factory manufacturing the baby that is fit for your life. He's manufacturing it. And when he finishes manufacturing, he won't give to another person, he brings it to you. So delay most times is not really denial. God is only taking his time to make what fits your life to hand over. You are in I mean, job seeker and you have not seen forget it when the right job that is with you comes alive you'll be smiling you'll be smiling you know 
Saul say, and they said, they said, we needed a king. God said, hold on, no, it's not time for, for me to give. He said, give us king, we need. God gave them Saul. Oh boy, when they saw Pepe from Saul like this, they wish never to have king. That's what happens when you are pressurizing God, pressurizing God. He said, I've given you a job in a lawyer company, he gives you as a good man. He said, this is my son, won't let me. I told him, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. You, won't let, you are pressurizing me. Oh, job, 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 job. Okay, go to gate. <laughs> you will not be at the gate anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ, rest your feet with me. Have you seen anything God has done? Is there anything around your life that is good? That is traceable to God? Lift up your voice now and give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Now, sincerely from your heart, not from your lips. Sincerely from your heart. Because the voice of your inner man sound louder than the voice of your outer man. Lift up your voice and give him praise. If there is anything you are seeing that is good around your home, around your family, around your career. Lord, I thank you. Is somebody thanking God at all? Are you thanking God at all? I give you all the glory. I bless your name, my father. Thank you, precious king. In Jesus' most precious name, we have prayed. Come on, let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Very quickly before we celebrate God in Thanksgiving in this Hosanna service, you are not born again. That's the first thing to do to acknowledge the faithfulness of God. Just surrender your life to him. That Lord, I'm grateful. Even though I'm not born again, you have kept me from January till now. Accident free, trouble free. Even the one I enter, you brought me out of it. I'm grateful to you. So you are such a person that is thinking very strong of the goodness of God upon your life. As all eyes close, all heads bow. I'd like you to lift up your hands. Let me pray with you. You want to give your life to Christ. So you want to rededicate your life. That you have heard God. Lord, I've made error before, but now I know. I rededicate my life to you. I re-engage my life to you afresh. You are doing that. Lift up your hands. You are giving your life to Christ. Lift up your hands. I want to pray with you all the same. He's a merciful God. And he's plenteous in mercy. You are doing that. Lift your hand very well. Let me pray with you very quickly. I surrender my life. I can see some hands already. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You are doing that. Please lift it very well. Lift it very well. God is the one that you are, you are looking up to this time. God is the one that you are looking up to. He's only God that can save you. You are doing that. Please come quickly to here. Ushers, make way for them. Let them come. I surrender my life to Jesus. I give my life. I rededicate my life. This time, no going back. Jesus, forgive me my sins. I acknowledge you as a doer of everything in my life. You are doing that. Please come to the front now. Choir sing some for us as they come. I surrender my life. I rededicate my life to you. Someone is coming. Please come. Please come. I surrender all to you. Someone is coming. Please come. Come, please come. Even children are not left out. Please come. Please come. I, I surrender my life. I surrender my life. Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me. Somebody's coming. Please come, brothers. Please come. Please come. Somebody's coming from there. Make way for them. Let them come. Let them come. I surrender my life. I surrender my life. I acknowledge your presence upon my life, Jesus. You are the doer. Thank you, my Father. For giving me the opportunity. For giving me the life I'm living. For reconciling me with you. I surrender my life. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Somebody, please come, my son. Please come. I surrender my life. Glory to God. Listen, you don't talk to little children. You don't talk to teenagers. You want to talk to adults that will turn your offer down. In the realm of the spirit, there is no class before God. Soul is soul. So anyone you see out there, talk to them. Just the same way this one, God is touching them. Nobody tell them, go outside. Anyone you see, if you can't, I've heard God's servant said, if you can't win adult, win children. Win children. What? Children? close your eyes. I pray with you this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, receive these precious children of yours. Write their names in the book of life. 
Give them the consciousness of heaven. No returning back to their vomit. Keep them fit. Or to the returning of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name.